Alright, I am back with another Sony Vegas tutorial. This time it's about masking and one little tip that I haven't seen anybody on YouTube say about yet. So here we go. Uh, just grab an image, drag it into your timeline, go to where it says this little square thing here that says event pan crop and you'll see this. Go over here, you'll see where it says position and mask, click on mask and click on the checkbox. There we go. It is now enabled. Click this little diamond square thingy at the end and make sure you have anchor creation tool selected. Yeah, that's going to be like your main masking tool. I don't know what all these other ones do. I have yet to try them. But right now we're just going to do simple crap. So hold Kataro to get a little hand so that we can drag it around to where you want it. Let go and zoom in by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. Just keep going and hold Kataro to drag. Let go of Kataro. And we can start masking. Now at this point, most people would just select the normal edit tool and just drag. But what happens is when you try to reconnect with the anchor creation tool, it'll make a curvy line instead of a straight line, which for me frustrates the hell out of me. So we're going to do this trick. Hold Kitarl to get the hand again. Drag. Keep holding Kitarl. Go to the end of the line until you get this little black arrow. Left click, and then we can start going again. Look at this. See? Yay! It works, and it doesn't have the curves. Hold guitar, drag, black arrow, black arrow, and uh oh. See, this might happen. I don't know why this happens. Sony Vegas is a piece of crap sometimes. Not worth 600 bucks. Anywho, um, when this happens, Make sure that you don't touch anything else. Press delete key, hold Kataro, go back, black arrow, left click, and click again. Yay, it fixes itself. I honestly have no idea why it does that. I, I've tried like different methods of um, trying to avoid that, but for some reason it's just kind of this random thing that happens. Not sure why. Anywho, that's all there is to masking as far as uh, you know, doing that little trick. You just rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Yes, I know this is taking a long time. So here's a little button that uh, fast forwards to the end if you don't want to see the rest of this. Now, see, sometimes you might make a mistake. Like, you see how I like kind of misclick there? Hold Kataro, click the little square, and just drag it to where you want it. Bam, piece of cake. All right, now I'm at the end. Hold Kataro, drag, click again. And when you get to the end of the circle, or whatever shape you drew, you get the anchor creation tool and a little circle. Click, and bam, you have it masked. Ta-da! Now, as far as these little things over here, um, negative would mean the opposite. So, now you see it, now you don't. And disabled is pretty much if you didn't dis if you didn't draw a mask at all, which would kind of beg the question, if you're going to have it disabled, why the hell draw one in the first place? Um, anti-alias. I don't know what the hell that is. I see no discernible difference. So, yeah. Wait, hold on. Uh, actually, you know what? I think that just makes it a little bit rougher if you turn off the anti-alias. Why can they just say smoothest or crisp or something like that? I don't know. Opacity, I'm guessing it means like how much of it you can see. So yeah, zero means dark. So yeah, or if you put it on negative and then you put opacity, you can make it barely seen. I think you could, I don't know. I don't know what kind of effect you would make from this. I'm assuming people have used this before. I've actually figured something out. I don't know. Anywho, go back, change it positive and feather type. Um, I don't know what this does. It appears to do nothing. Or maybe if I put in and it goes like this. Oh, I see. Ooh, it makes it blurred. Uh, well, then why not just call it blurred? Seriously. Oh, well, whatever. At least we figured that out. So, that's in. This is out. Huh. Interesting. Well, now we know how to make stuff blurred. That is cool. I wonder what it means by both. Go ahead, go down here, and... Ooh. 
Makes a nice little shadow effect. Interesting. Kind of makes it look really 3D. Well, there we go. There's a little bonus touch for you. How to make stuff blurry and in 3D, sort of. All right. Now, one other thing, too. You see how down here how you have your little diamond square block things? Those are called keyframes. Say that you want it complete, but in the next frame of the movie, you want it to be, like, cut in half. Basically, take this and drag it. You see how it, like, clicks every time that I drag it? That means you're going to have to zoom in a little bit further. So just keep going, and you'll see, like, these little dividers. They'll just keep getting bigger and wider and wider until you get to about here. One nanosecond or millisecond, whatever that is. I'm not good with time. Anyway. You see how it takes forever just to get from one spot to another? Yeah, that's how far you've zoomed in. Anywho, you go to the next one and you click on this, create keyframe. Ba bam But it actually copied the one from before. See, like that? One and two. You can go ahead, click, delete, and delete. Deleted the entire thing. So if you just want a section, hold guitar, I'll just like, you know, just cut a little section in here. Bam. See? Drag this back to confirm it. Frame one, frame two, frame one, frame two. Congratulations, you now know how to keyframe, mask, and make stuff blurry slash 3D. That's it for this tutorial. I will see you guys in the next one. If you have one you want me to create for you of something that I know that you don't, that I possibly might not know and that you possibly already know, um, just go ahead and shoot me a request. I'd be happy to take it. See you guys next time.